So this video, in this video I wish to, wish to give a short introduction to lm method which is the uh, most popular mystery method. Uh, in case of mystery method we do not require any elements for uh, interpolation uh, for generating uh, interpolation function. When in case of finite element method we discretize the entire structure into several elements and for uh, determining displacement of any point of interest within this element I will establish interpolation function use, uh, which interpolates from the nodal displacements of these elements of this element. Uh, well, in case of measuring methods, uh, we are not going to use elements. Here, we are going to interpolate displacements by using uh, certain other uh, interpolation functions. Uh, why we go for measuring method is, in case of uh, finite element method, as we have to discretize the entire structure into uh, several elements, in case of problems like crack propagation or uh, fragmentation problems, uh, closer to the crack tip, if I have to uh, uh, reduce the element size, if I go for remeshing, because of remeshing in a smaller region, it will lead to remeshing the, I will end up remeshing the entire domain. The same thing happens in case of adaptive analysis also. So, in order to overcome these issues, I go for measuring methods. In measuring methods, as I do not require any elements, in places where uh, there is uh, stress gradient or where the stress concentration is more, I can just introduce more number of nodes in those regions. I will not disturb the discretization in region far away from this uh, uh, from this place of uh, from this place where there is more discontinuity. So, in case of elementary galloping method, uh, here the interpolation between the node of displacement is established by using moon least square interpolants. Moving least square interpolants are used for interpolating nodal displacements. Uh, this elem free method is not a complete mesh free method, it is it has a pseudo mesh free method because in this case of in the in elem free method, uh, we use a background mesh for performing numerical integration for generating stiffness matrix, force vector uh, for uh, uh, developing G matrix and all that. So, elementary galactic method is not a complete mesh free method, it is a pseudo mesh free method because here we have a background cell of integration. So, the, when, when I use moving least square interpolants, I can uh, uh, write the expression for displacement function like this, uh of x is given summation of p j of x a j of x i, where this is the vector of uh, basis function and this is the vector of coefficients and the summation will be from j is equal to 1 to m where m is the number of uh, terms in this basis function. Uh, so, this is the displacement function, this is the approximate function which I write. So, to determine these unknown coefficients, I will go for minimizing divided residual because of this uh, uh, approximate function. So, do j by do a will be equal to 0. I will try to minimize this weighted residual functional and this weighted residual functional will look like this will be w i cap of x p of x a p transpose of x minus u i whole square. So, this is the residual square of residue which is product uh, which makes product with the weight function. I wish to minimize this uh, weighted residual functional with respect to this unknown coefficient. And this weight function is usually taken as a cubic spline uh, function or a quartic spline function. Uh, by minimizing this uh, weighted residual function with respect to these unknown coefficients, I will be able to determine the unknown coefficients a of x, which are given, by, which is given by a inverse of x, b of x, u s, where a of x is again given by i two n, sorry n, w i cap of x, p of x i p transpose of x i p transpose of x i. So, here a of x is given by this expression and b of x is given by w i cap of x p of x i. Okay. So, here I have to make certain clarifications. So, what is this vector of basis function? This vector of basis function p of x is usually chosen from the Pascal's triangle. So, in Pascal's triangle, depending upon the order of polynomial, what I need, I will pick the terms from the Pascal's triangle. So, p of x, if I go only for uh, first order monomials, my p of x will be of 1, x and y, a 3 cross 1 vector. Okay. 
and this weighting function as I told earlier it will be a cubic or quadratic prime weight function. Uh, so this weight function will have maximum value at the point of interest over which it is established and the value of this weight function will decrease as you move away from the point of interest and, have, and if you exceed uh, a limit in a limit the weight function will vanish completely. Okay? So the value of the weight function will be maximum at the point of interest and it will be getting reduced as you move away from the point of interest and it will completely vanish as you move away from the domain of this weight function. So this domain of weight function is set as a support domain. Okay. In case of finite around methods, if I if I need to know the displacement in any, in any point of interest, uh, I will interpolate from the nodal displacements which are present of those nodes which are present in the element. When it is a machinery methods, if I need to know the displacement in any point of interest, I will pick those nodes which are closer to this point of interest, which lie within the support domain of this point of interest and I will develop an interpolation function which can interpolate nodal displacements of these nodes which lie within this support domain and these interpolants are here uh, moving the square interpolants in case of elementary hierarchy methods. So in case of machinery methods, if you need to know the displacement at any point of interest, I use the nodal displacements of all those nodes which lie within the support domain of this point of interest. Uh, this support domain uh, is determined by using the average nodal spacing uh, and the value of this weight function within this will have a value of greater than 0 within this support domain and it will vanish as you move away from the support domain. It will have maximum value at the point of interest and it will keep on reducing as you move away from the point of interest. So here my A of x is set as a moment matrix and I have B of x. So once I get to know these unknown coefficients, I will be able to determine the shape functions here. So shape function for A of x will be this A of x, that is A inverse B, P transpose. Okay. So P transpose A inverse B will be my shape functions, while P transpose will have a size of 1 cross 3, A matrix, A matrix will have a size of, here it is 3 cross 1, it is 1 cross 3, so A matrix will have a size of 3 cross 3 and this B matrix will have a size of 3 cross N, where N is the number of nodes which lie within the support domain of this point of interest, of this point of interest X. Okay. So my shape function uh, will be a vector of size 1 by N. Uh, so n is the number of uh, nodes within the point of interest. So displacement in this point of interest is interpolated from the nodal displacements which lie, nodal displacements of those nodes which lie within this point of interest by protecting that nodal displacement with their corresponding shear function which is obtained by this expression. So once I get to know the shape functions, I can determine by stiffness matrix B transpose. Uh -huh. So B is a strain displacement matrix. Once I get to know the shape functions, by differentiating the shape functions, I will get to know the strain displacement matrix. So from the from this product, where C is the constitutive matrix, by perform this inter, performing this integration over the domain, I will be able to determine my stiffness coefficients. Uh, so as I said earlier, this integration cannot be performed analytically. I will go for numerical integration. Uh, so to perform numerical integration, I have to go for a background mesh. So by in the background mesh, there will be uh, background mesh can be a rectangular background mesh or a triangular background mesh. And instead those uh, meshes, there will be gauss points. Each gauss point will have its own weight and samplings. So at each uh, sampling point will have its own weight. So at each and every gauss point, I will determine the value of the function. I will product that with the weight and I will go for the entire summation within the domain. That's what I get from here. So the problem with these uh, moving least square shape functions is, the problem with moving least square shape functions is, they do not satisfy the Kronach delta property. So as per Kronach delta property, delta ij should be equal to 0 if i is not equal to j. So it should ban, so the shape function will have a value of 1 at each one point and it will vanish at all other functions in case of finite element. But in case of moving least square interpolants, it is not that they will vanish at all other nodes other than the node, other than the corresponding Mode. It is because because we are we are developing only an approximation in case of moving the square uh, functions. We are trying to 
uh, establish a best curve fit which has least deviation from all the nodal displacements of those nodes which lie within the support domain of this point of interest. So if I have nodal displacements, uh, if, I, if I perform uh, interpolation by using finite element shape functions, I'll have straight lines, I can plot the shape functions in this manner. But if in case of moving these square shape functions, it will be a best fit curve which does not pass through any of these nodal displacements. Okay. In case of finite element shape functions, they vanish at all other nodes except the corresponding node. It will have value of 1 at each one node when i is equal to j and when i is not equal to j it will become, it will vanish at all other nodes. While in this case, the displacement, the approximation curve does not pass through nodal displacement, does not pass through any of the nodal displacements and it does, but it does uh, best represents the nodal, dis nodal displacement distribution. This approximation curve it best represents the distribution of nodal displacements, but it does not pass through any of the nodal displacements. So if I have to impose boundary conditions, uh, I cannot impose boundary conditions directly because the shape functions do not vanish at uh, all other nodes and it is not even one at each one node when i is equal to j. So directly I cannot impose boundary conditions. To impose boundary conditions, I need Lagrange multipliers in case I launch a galaxy method. Usually we go for the Lagrange multipliers. The problem with Lagrange multipliers is it will increase the size of the stiffness matrix. And I have to use this Lagrange multipliers only in the displacement boundary where I have to make the displacements zero. Uh, for, so besides the nodal displacements, what I have, nodal unknown displacements, I will also have unknown Lagrange multipliers. And these Lagrange multipliers will be interpolated by using first order Lagrange interpolants like how we use in finite unknown method. So finally the size of the uh, Algebraic, the number of algebraic uh, equations finally I have will be, will be more here because I have more unknowns, not just the nodal displacements but also the Lagrange multipliers of those nodes present in the displacement boundary. Uh, so the final set of algebraic equations will be of this sort, kg 0 u lambda which will be equal to f1 q. This is because of Lagrange multipliers. Uh, this is actually the integral performed over the displacement boundary for the product of uh, moving the square shape function and the Lagrange multipliers shape function, which is uh, first order Lagrange interpolants, what we use in case of finite element, uh, finite element uh, what we have in finite element, which we use in finite element. If it is a 2D problem, the displacement boundary will be 1D. So I will use 1 minus x by L and x by L shape functions, what we used in uh, finite element methods. While if uh, three, in case of 3D problem, I will have a 2D displacement boundary. So once I get to know these algebraic set of equations, I will solve this algebraic set of equations and be able to determine the nodal displacements. So once I get to know the nodal displacements, finally I need to know the stresses in each and every point of interest. So at my point of interest, to determine stresses, I have to again establish my support domain. I have to see my neighbor points which lie within this support domain. I have to establish, uh, uh, establish uh, an interpolation function. So once I get to know these displacements, uh, from this shape function which I have established, I will be able to determine my strain displacement matrix, B matrix. So product of my strain displacement matrix with these no nodal displacements will get me the strain matrix. Once I get to know the strain matrix by producting the constitutive uh, matrix, I will be able to find the stresses in that point of interest. So on whatever point of interest I need to know these stresses, I will establish uh, a support domain, I will find the uh, uh, shape function, I will uh, differentiate the shape function, I will determine the strain displacement matrix and I will determine the stresses. This is what we do in case of Elon-Free-Galkin method.